Good morning, Good morning everybody. everybody. This is Michael, this is Michael from, from CanPanConnection.ca, and, Can and we're broadcasting from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, Canada, which is right across from Detroit. And we have special guests uh, today, uh, Virginia Veruette from Panama, who is a historian on Panama, and she's going to tell us a little bit about uh, history of Panama. And, and today is today the uh, the holiday for separating from Colombia. Is that correct? Yes. Today we are celebrating 110 years of um, independence from um, La Gran Colombia, which was at that time the way it was called, 1903. 1903. Can can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I've read a uh, some some books on. I just finished a good book, the the path between two seas. Mm -hmm. It was a excellent book, and it was telling a little bit about the uh, uh, the separation from Colombia. Now that wasn't the first. Uh, uh, now at that time, I guess uh, Panama was a, a state or a, a district. I think they called it uh, of of Colombia. Uh, now. What, what actually, ha what happened to, to have the independence from Colombia? Well, it was mainly uh, a, a, few, a few different issues that were already happening. In Panama as a province or state of La Gran Colombia, the movement um, in, throughout South America, because of the, the, the will to be separated, um, each country as an independent um, state. Colombia had already been, mainly for Panama, um, militants, we call them in Spanish, to, to um, I say seek the independence, was mainly the economical situation at that time because of all the civil wars were, that Colombia was going through, and the fact that the French were already failing to um, build the Panama Canal. All those things were happening at the same time, together with the, the U.S. government also, parallel, had uh, been um, negotiating with Colombia the treaty so they could be the ones to take over the Panama Canal construction. The Senate, the Colombian Senate, didn't approve such treaty. So the, the Panamanians who were behind the, the movement to become independent, who had already seen that economically it was not convenient to, to keep as part of Colombia, were already negotiating directly with the, the United States, so this would have so this would take place. And these are the main economical, social reasons why we became independent of Colombia at that precise time. Right. There was a, right. lot, of was a, lot, of a lot of politics involved with that, with the United yeah, States. The United States. They, wanted they wanted to have control over the canal zone. Yeah. So, so that was where a lot of help from the Americans. Uh, and it was... I guess you're looking in the Americans' best interest. They were looking at uh, to build that, but I heard also that it was really a, a bloodless uh, revolution. It was like a one-day revolution with with Colombia. No, it didn't. It wasn't a day thing. We had already tried to be independent in three times in the 1800s. Like um, it, it, it took it took a while for us to become independent from Colombia. But what it is a fact, what is a fact is that it wasn't very violent. It wasn't very, it wasn't very um, bloody, like they would say nowadays. The Panamanian culture, as a culture, one of its characteristics is that we're not violent people. Yes, we are. We could be loud because we are coastal. We could be. We can. We can be very, very joyful. But we're not considered a country that has been a culture that. It's been involved in, 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 in wars, like for example in Colombia. Not that I'm saying that's wrong, but it's part of our history. This is a fact that is within our way and, uh, and culture. We're not, a, we're not, I think we're more negotiators than, than violent. We, right. we see 
we see we have seen throughout the years because of our geographical position, which is the main the main thing for Panama. We have a very very privileged geographical position, and this is natural. Mm -hmm. We have been always approached by the visionaries in in every time in our history to become part of project. This is the way I see it, because it's still happening today. Panama is a, is a, is a path throughout the, the Americas, and it's, it's very, very convenient to use it for economical purposes. So since, since the first time when the, the Spanish were here, this has been the, the main purpose of wanting to be in Panama. Yes, throughout history, everybody has wanted to, to conquer us, they did at some point, they have wanted to be our owner, but I, if you read all the treaties, there was always people sitting down and negotiating. There, always, there had always been negotiations involved, okay, I give you this, you give me that, I will get this back from you, and I always have believed that, that everything happens for a reason, and that's one of the reasons we have the currency we have. There were many agreements going on at that time in 1903. It wasn't a, it was, Yes, there were some shooting. There were some. Um, there were. They were from Bogota. They, when the Colombians realized that we were already more with the United States than with them because of what had happened with the, the not backing up the law to agree with the United States to build the canal, they started um, launching um, bombs from Bogota, attacking the city. But when by the time that happened, the United States had already had covered the bay with the Navy, so it, it didn't take too long for, um, for the country to recover its um, quietness and, and peace. Yeah, interesting. Like, like right now there's a lot of holidays going on in, in Panama. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, now in November, and it's a coincidence, it's, it's very coincidental that um, they all happen to be in the same month. On the 3rd, we celebrate our independence from Colombia. On the 4th, it, it, it's just a holiday that is not a legal national holiday to celebrate our flag. This is the day we dedicate to the flag. The 5th, we celebrate the independence honoring Colón. Colón is it's one of our provinces on the coast, on the west, on the east north side of um, Panama, if you see the America map, and when the Colombians had already agreed throughout the rest of the country, including Veraguas and, and Los Santos, where the main movements always took place, and the city, they, they still had about 500 of their military in Colón that didn't want to surrender to the fact that they had lost one of their provinces, which was Panama. And Finally, the fifth, which if you if you see the timing, it's only 48 hours after the main one happened. There was a negotiation between the military and the Panamanians that was not bloody. I mean, there was some shooting and some, but it wasn't a great thing. It was mainly about you know what this is. There was I have read historically that there was a negotiation, there was an economical negotiation between the people, our people in Colón and the Colombians, and they decided to, to, to surrender to the fact that they had to leave. And we allowed them to leave peacefully by themselves through the coast, through the sea, we call it, by sea, right. yeah. back to Colombia. So that's why the fifth is so important, because it was like the wrapping up of this is finally done, there's nothing else to do here but to start um, over as a new nation, as an independent state, and they see what, what are we going to do. The, the 10th of November, which we also celebrate, is the main day when all the revolutionary and final procedures to become independent from Spain in 1821 began. That's why the 10th is so important for us. And the people from that province, from Los Santos, from La Villa. Right. That's why they call it the first shout of independence. 
And historically, it really means for us that that's the main most important independence for Panama, the one we acquired from the Spanish Empire in 1821. Right. So that was when the... the uh-huh. Was that when when your the, the declaration of independence or your your uh, your charter, I guess, for the country? Yes, the tenth of November. The tenth, yeah. The twenty the twenty eighth. It was it was when finally the whole country had was officially recognized worldwide by all the nations. That's why we have those two days. Now, usually in most of the countries it should be one day, yes? Right. But throughout the years in Panama, um, each state has fought for the right of saying, okay, you know what, this is a really important day. So at the end, we have all these celebrations in November in Panama. It's part of our history, it's part of who we are as a culture. And, and more and more, the, the, the population is um, learning more details about it and really um, studying and understanding what they all really meant, because I know it sounds a bit, a bit arrogant, but I'm visiting the the, the project of the bio museum that Frank Gehry has um, designed for Panama. Mm -hmm. They were giving us a lecture about how the fact millions of years ago, the fact that the isthmus became an isthmus. Panama wasn't there millions and millions of years ago became so important in the, in, the, in the natural way the world was, the way the water became warmer, the, all the current, sea, sea, um, ocean-wise, would be the word. So at the end, I go back to the point of Panama being so important because of the geographical position. So for us, it's really, really important. Every, every um, date that back up part of that history we have with all the the cultures that were interested and still are still interested in having Panama as an ally as a, a geographical position to come and have quality life to come and, and do business to come and do um, um, cultural events it, it's very for me it's very interesting to go back in time and see how we're still doing it but in a civilized more civilized way in a more modern way and we have as a culture grown to to better ourselves to to understand and offer uh, every time a better service as a service country to the to the rest of the world well exactly the the geographic location is ideal um, when I when I was starting my website going back six months or so I I put the Panamanian national anthem on the front, but somebody told me, which I have, is a uh, a song that most Panamanians know a lot more. Um, this is a song "Patria" by Ruben Blades. Uh, I'm sure you know that song. It's a yeah, wonderful it. song. It's very very nice words, uh, you know that that he has. So, and Ruben Blades is a he's a movie star, but he was also the minister of tourism, correct? Yes, um, Ruben. Um, Ruben is, is an artist that I really, really, truly admire. He was, while I was growing up, somebody who was always writing, he's a composer too, he writes his own songs, most of them he has written them. And the interesting thing about Ruben is that he, he comes from a, a, a neighborhood called San Felipe, mm -hmm. where the Casco Viejo is, right. he's from that neighborhood, and if you have the the knowledge, the knowledge of the language, good, good knowledge of the language, to be able to understand his lyrics, they're all stories. Yeah. Stories of himself and how he has become who he is. Stories of himself, of the movements that were happening at that time. He, he has a very famous song called Tiburon. And I always use this song as an example to, uh, to, to present to people what type of artist he is. He has really grown and developed into, into, and re, and reinvented himself into who he is now in his early sixties, as a, as a man and as an artist, as an art actor, as a law as a lawyer, and it's very interesting because, for example, that song Tiburon. So Tiburon was the American 
um, the United States at that time. You know, in the in the times where the the Somoza time, in the times when Castro, all these periods of um, our history in Latin America, where the United States were seen as the the um, they use many bad words. I don't like using them, but they were the ones in control. So he he had these songs against the United States, but at the same time he went to Harvard University. At the same time, he has grown within his country. He has said it in um, um, in his interviews after becoming the tourist um, minister. I have grown. I I I I have managed to know more about my, my Panama from one province to the other. I have managed to know my people, and you see that now he has reinvented himself as a writer. He wrote this song, Patria, where he states, you know, who we are, where we come from, when, how a kid comes to you and asks you what Patria is, what a, being pa a patriotic is. Patria, uh, in English, I don't have the right word for English. Oh, that's right. That's that. right. He, he, Panamanians, I always, when people want to know a little bit about us and understand us, I always try to, to, to go back to this statement. Coastal people are coastal people. I don't know how it is in the United States, but at least in all the Latin American countries, we, the coastal people, have a lot of things in common. One of the things in common we have, they call it the iodine, they call it the seafood, they call it the sun, they call it the, the palm trees. I believe it's a combination of things. The sea level situation, we are very happy, joyful people. And I understand why for the rest of the world and the Panamanians, placing the, the Son Patria is more attractive. It's, it, the, our anthem is like most of the anthems. It, give, it gives us pride. Patria gives us, there's a sense of hope. There, there's a sense of positivity. There's a sense of this man knows exactly and has shown us that anybody can do anything they want as long as they have the, the goals and the, the focus, the discipline. Ruben is, he has become a real icon in many ways for all the, the, the social classes within Panama. And he, of course, is a good ambassador of, uh, of the good talent that you can find in Panama as a country too, being so small and, and with a very... Um, a limited population, 3.5 million in the whole country. It, it, I believe these are the reasons why you were told that it would be better to to play Patria instead of the our anthem. Sorry. Uh, that's what Yasmin from uh, the radio show was telling me when I was looking for <coughs> for songs, she was telling me Patria is a uh, much better. Uh, Karen, you had a question that you wanted to ask Virginia? Yeah, just in terms of the national holiday, is that, it's so interesting and uh, the festivities are abounding in November. I'm just wondering if November is popular for visitors. Uh, is that a time, because I know it's also you know, towards the end of the rainy season, but is it a time when a lot of visitors come to Panama to specifically participate in the celebrations? Yes, I had a I had a BMB for for eleven years, and yes, our high season as a touristic high season begins in December, where our dry season begins. We have rainy season and dry season. The rainy one is nine months a year, and the dry one is the rest. But November when I had the lodging, was involved in the lodging business, November was the beginning of the real flow of tourism, tourism mm -hmm. to the city, oh. from Europe, anywhere in the world. Now, we are, as a country, as I was saying, we're developing in many, many, many aspects. We are more, as a country, offering more options throughout the November time. Because we have seen that lots of the um, tourists are really interested in coming for those festivities. Because sure. it's not only about the parades in the city, there's, a, there's so much going on throughout the country. In every town, there's a, a different way that we celebrate all these um, holidays. So yes, the, the November is, is a good time. And also, added up to the fact that 
it is good for us that this is a dry season. The, it is the it is the um, winter season. It's mm -hmm. really it, the autumn is finishing and the winter is beginning. So the temperatures are low, getting lower in the north. So mm -hmm. most of the, most of our tourists are running away from from the cold. Come and come and have some warm weather. So November does. Um, does not. It is attractive for the for the tourists oh, more and more every good. year. That's good because I can only imagine that that would enhance I didn't a hear visitor's that. perspective coming during that time. Yes, yes. Um, I didn't hear part of it. You said he got caught off. Uh oh. What's that? I something got caught off. I didn't hear the whole sentence. Karen said. Oh, no, I was just saying that I'm glad that uh, the celebrations are, are happening in November and that is a time when people are visiting so that they can experience that, that part of the culture. Yes, it, business wise, when I, when I had the, the hostel, yes, November was great for us, but if, for the people who have businesses in Panama, there's also a fact. November, I call it the end of the year, it's the end of October in the part of, because there we have so many holidays and now the, the state has it's been adapting it in, to, in focus on tourism. So sometimes they will do the, what they do in other countries that they will, let's say the, the 28th is the Wednesday, they will move it to the Monday so they make the bridge, the long weekend. Mm -hmm. So at the end, depending on the calendar and the, of every year, the, the part of the businesses that that are not in the tourist industry, how they're going to manage themselves throughout that month? Because mm -hmm. it could be it could be a bit like okay, I am not going to be able to get things as fast as I would in any other month. And I always always explain my clients about that. If you want some things to be done in November and you're you're living here, okay. You have to understand that this is happening, and you got to look at the calendar and see the, the long weekends, how they're going to be arranged, and the time. Um, but for the tourist industry, it's great. Oh, because great. For the tourism industry, it's great. Now, if you're bringing people from abroad, then it goes back to the same point. The people who are going to offer you the services, if you need transport, if you're going to arrange things, I really suggest people to do it always looking at the calendar and understanding that our holidays mm -hmm. because it's not it's not it's not the, the regular thing and some mm -hmm. people might get up in, get, get into a situation that is not um um nice because because of that mm -hmm. it's just a, it's just a matter of knowing about it right right so let's organize the tour mm -hmm. So and the um, fact that the city is the city is um it's for a few hours the third and the fourth like tomorrow and today today is a Sunday and it's the third so it's a legal law holiday tomorrow we it's off legally because of the third not because of the fourth mm -hmm. the thing is that the city gets because of the parade and the length of the time they take. Also, you have to, um, I would say, to plan on how you're going to to move yourself around in the city too. Right. Those things, there's a few things that can be taken in consideration by knowing exactly the day they and avoid it, like knowing exactly the days in the month that we are going to be and what is happening in every province. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, a question for you, Virginia. <laughs> You've, uh, you, you, were, you were born in, in Panama, correct? Yes, Panama City. Mm -hmm. Panama City, okay. Um, you, were, you were mentioning in your, your bio that you sent to me about Panama. Why, why would you recommend people come to Panama for, for vacation? And why is Panama becoming very popular for uh, expats to come and live in Panama, in your opinion? In my opinion, and being very straightforward, economically speaking, in the part of, because of our currency, 
is a very stable country economically. It offers the, the travelers uh, an environment where which is an environment that is very safe and is very service oriented. Yes, I know that we are developing in some in some areas because of the, the, the size of the country, because of the of the, the, the population we have. But we have mainly been a service country. This is a place where you can hub in the case of travelers who want to travel in the region, for example. You come to Panama and right now we have there's many there's, there's more and more many offers ticket wise. To come here and then jump to Cuba, jump to, to Nicaragua. The the part of the, the part of being a hub is one of the main things as a traveler. The part of um of the currency gives the people who are going to move here, for example. If you're going to move into Panama, you 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 can be sure that economically things are very stable. And and that economical stability gives the country a social stability. Yes, we're going through a lot of changes right now. People might see in the media that there's a lot of things going on, but I have always said it in using it as a um, sociology point from a sociology point of view. Societies don't like changes because human beings don't like changes. So the fact that we are becoming more and more a developing country has had to make us understand that the roads have to be wider. There's a subway. Um, who, that is going to be finished in a few years because the the world is needing that from this ISMO, which is a service country to that world. So if you want to come here and do business, there's it's, it's very, very, very um, easy to do it because of the currency, because of the, uh, the, the closeness if you're in, in the north, the closeness if you're in South America, the the quality life that you can have after that, the hours you are being a business person, for example, because at the same time, as I tell people in a in a joking way, this is a fisherman town mentality. Meaning what? I'm not I'm not putting down anything or the, my country because of that, but it is the coastal way. There's a time in the day that we we'll finish, and that's it. And everybody has time to talk to everybody. Everybody has time to go have a, a bite. A drink. This is the mom. This is the, the grandparents. That part of Panama is still there, which I believe a lot of people are looking for in countries where the system doesn't allow them to have that because it's too fast. Everything has to be done right away. It comes to a point that people look around and they say, "Okay, I have a great life, but I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that." If you understand and see that part of Panama as a positive situation for your personal life, I think it's great because we all need that mm -hmm. to really enjoy and complement our professional life and our personal life. For the retiree, I believe that starting with the law we have for the retiree, it's a great, it's a great, great um, issue. Our Panamanian law states that the retiree uh, without matter mattering or without um, nationality have this have right to discount in every thing, single thing in Panama. Mm -hmm. For example, in medication, just by reaching a certain age in Panama, you become a ma un adulto mayor, an elderly adult. Would you say that that way in English? And you get all these benefits in air tickets in hospitals. In um, food, um, no alcoholic drink. Um, in um, the, the the cinema, mm -hmm. and it can be from in in hotels, for example. Mm -hmm. A reta any retiree, foreigner or national, that ha that is over 55 in the case of women, 57 in the case of men, have 30 percent discount in any hotel, doing from Monday till Thursday, and 50 percent discount. I'm sorry. 50% discount from Monday to Thursday, and from Friday to Sunday, they have 30%. Mm -hmm. So it's a very attractive incentive for the people who come live here. Yes, Panama has, has raised their prices in many, in many, many, many things, 
But I was, as I was explaining a client the other day, it's a matter of really knowing the city and know why. Because you can still find a pound of banana for 25 cents mm -hmm. on the street. And it doesn't, you don't have to go to red zones to do that. The market is very accessible and very safe. And, 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 and for example, na um, natural food um, produced is mm -hmm. very inexpensive here. Mm -hmm. Transportation is very inexpensive. Yes, we are now in a transition with it, but it's 25 cents the ride in a bus. 25 cents US. The, the, the rent, depending on, I think by now we're going through um, a situation in Panama where we are trying everything. And, and, and there's a lot of speculation. I don't see it as a bad word. It's very normal when, when you start in as a, as a state or as a culture to try and offer things. It's part of the beginning. So there's, but the real estate, I still find it inexpensive. We have more and more offers today. Mm -hmm. um, yes? No, I agree. No, I agree. The beaches, for example, if you want to go to nature, we, the city, are in the forest. If you want to go on a Wednesday morning like I do, I go run I go running at the Metropolitan Park, for example. I can do any any type of bird watching without leaving the city for the bird watching, for example. Because the city is built in the forest. We we have access to the cocoa drives right there, to the turtles, and it's it's literally within the city. If I want to go to the, to the beach, it is we have we have more better and better um, roads now to go to the beach. Oh, yes, you have the first one is Veracruz, which is maybe 20 minutes from the city. If you want to go there and have uh, a fried fish, um, seafood. If you want to go to a better beach and better and better infrastructure, you just drive a little bit ahead. If you drive six hours, seven hours, you're in Costa Rica already. If you want to if you want to get out of the city on the weekends and, and, and go to a lake, you go to a lake. If you want to go to the Caribbean, you can do it in one day, both. You can go to the, swim in the Caribbean in the morning and come back to the Pacific and do it at night. Mm -hmm. Because of the, the, the territorial size of our country, I find it amazing that you can just, in, in no time, when you're out of the traffic of the city that we're going through now because of all the buildings, right. you, there's, there's the timing you take, the time that takes to get anywhere, is 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 so short, and you do feel like you're in in paradise. I I as a Panamanian see it. You you go to Pedasí, for example. You go to um to Boca, to certain places, San Blas. San Blas right now it's only three hours away by car, and the and the road is amazing. It's it's, it's asphalt road. It's completely asphalted. All the way to Kati, and the rainforest sighting that you have there is amazing. I I really enjoy it every time. You can want to you want to do it by boat, you can do it by boat. You want to do it by plane, you do it by plane. If you want to get there in 15 minutes, it's a matter of having the access to the to the to the service and doing it. If you want to go to Boca in 15 minutes, you take an airplane and you get there in 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and you can come back the next day and have a great out outing in, in paradise. You go to Cayos Holandeses in San Blas, which is the end, 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 end of the archipelago. I have never seen something like that. And I've been a sailor in the South Pacific. You want to go to Coiba and, 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 and explore and scuba dive also. It, it, I could talk all day about everything that you can do in Panama, <laughs> including the banking, the banking system. It, I, I find that very unique about our country. Just, I used to tell my clients when I had the lodging business. And I still think so. Panama is a country that allows its citizens to decide how, decide how they want to live. Mm -hmm. If you want to go buy an item that is 50 cents downtown, you can go do it in a safe way. And if you want to go to Multiplaza and buy it for 500 times what you pay, you have that choice without going against yourself without struggling. I decide if I want to buy an item or a, a, a produce 
it's for ten dollars or if I go to the market and I buy it for for five. Now there ain't, there's no there's not an strict regulation right now. I think that it's coming in the future. Mm -hmm. By going back to what I said before, the economy, the currency really backs up the stability of the country. So I don't really see negativeness coming anywhere close to Panama, in the future to Panama. I have always been predicting about it. And thank God, until today, I haven't made any mistake on the things I've been predicting about the way we're going to be behaving and managing ourselves as a country. That's well, I, think the, I, think the, I think the fact, think that, the fact that, that many people are still are working still at, working at Panama, Panama as a relocation as a option, as a, what? As a relocation as a option, option as a to live, mm -hmm. confirms exactly confirms what you're exactly saying. What you're saying. Um, I have found, I have that found that the numbers, numbers are I, well, let me back up. I expect the numbers to drop off because of the affordability. Some prices rising. But for all of the reasons that you've spoken about, Panama is a viable option and will continue to be so for many, many people. Yes, yes. Um, and I have to say it, it's, it's a fact everywhere in the world. Um, the tourism. And the foreigners are the ones, most of the time, that, that movement are the ones that, is that what really influences on how expensive a place things it can be. Besides the currency and the, the stability of a, a certain currency in a country. So we have now more demand of everything. So if you don't have enough offer, what, does that, what is, is that going to do? It's going to increase the price of that offer. And right now, this is the way we are in Panama. But something that I really enjoy every day is that that's another thing. Being a small type of town, city, like because of the population we have, there were not many options in the past. But now, instead of one bakery in one neighborhood, there's ten bakeries. I'm not. I'm not lying. I live in El Cangrejo, and and every every month there's a new bakery. That wasn't like that in the past. So what do I see there? I see that competition is going to really stabilize uh -huh. the work. Uh -huh. the, 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 offer, the offer prices. Because competition does that. In the past, that was that, there, we didn't have that, many competition, that much competition in things. Now there is. So that, that will lower the prices at some point, right. which are not expensive. If, if we talk about prices in Panama, as I, I said, you know, the tickets for the bus is 25 cents. Mm -hmm. I, I find that, I, 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 I as a Panamanian don't, still don't believe it. And it's still okay, the price, yeah? The tickets to go to Chiriqui is $23. Mm -hmm. To go to El Mirante, to go to Boquete. You see, it, I think these are the main facts that I would present to anybody who wants to come live here. Medically wise, health. More and more we have more um, um, institutions and hospitals that are improving themselves. They're having um, ve joint ventures with the state, the United States. We have the John Hopkins, the Punta Pacifica is in agreement with the John Hopkins in, in, in the state. They are private hospitals that are, are acquiring better and better knowledge and, and, and um, equipment, the dentist, the plastic surgeon, the, the, the doctors in, in specialized in, in the geriatric, ger the, the elderly people. Mm -hmm. Those services are still much, much cheaper than anywhere else, even in, even in Latin American countries. Mm -hmm. as, but as I, as I always say, we are right now in a transformation and we as Panamanians look around and we I, I see people who are still in a shock on how fast this country has changed in the last five years but I see that it's going to be for good I really truly believe so right like you were right, saying like Virginia, were saying, Virginia that, Panama that Panama is going, is through, going through transition, transition and, and I, 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 can see, I can see like you said a lot of people don't like change, change. 
but change is good. I think with uh, Martinelli, some people love him, some people hate him, but I think he's doing things to uh, to improve the country and uh, creating jobs, creating infrastructure, and creating interest from uh, other countries, other people to come into Canada. I know when I, about three years ago, I didn't know anything about Panama. And then the more I got to know about Panama, the more I thought, what a wonderful country it is. So that's why uh, I started doing a radio show and started uh, the website. And I, I still talk to many Canadians every day, and they don't know much about Panama at all. But um, I learned that Panama is a wonderful place to visit, or if you're looking at retiring. And I know Karen, with her uh, local travel excursions, is trying to uh, get people to look at Panama as a place to, to to live when they retire because of all the things you said. Now, one question, um, I guess uh, there's many, many areas. Do you have a favorite area if in Panama that you would love to live in? I would live in Pedasi. Pedasi? Yes. But there's no problem with Pedasi, but the fact that Pedasi is a bit, a few years behind Boquete. I was in Boquete this year twice and last year once. And I almost moved there from one day to another. Why? This is my personal opinion. Because Boquete, once again, offers me the option. I decide if I want to go to a fancy restaurant or if I want to go to the local shack to eat local food. In Perasi, you don't have that yet. But if, if people are not about that, I recommend Volcan. I like Volcan too. I like Perasi. Of course, I like some islands in the Caribbean, in the Pacific, but those are too isolated. Gobernadora and um, in that area in Coiba, which are not places where you can live. But I would do those. I would do first Pedasi, second Volcan, and third Boquete. In my personal way of lifestyle, quiet, safe. Now, Pedasi has something that I really, really, really found out that is very interesting. I was there two years ago spending a week there to, to know the place very well. And it is very quiet. It is, people are very, very, very town, but not town in the part of being slow or that they're not interested. They're just quiet, nice, humble people in Tennessee. Most of the people are in the countryside, but Tennessee, for example, they told me that they had never had an incident like they had had that day, that carnival. I said, what happened? Somebody pulled out a knife. And I was like, that's all? Yes, that was very bad. I said, this is a quiet town. <laughs> so those are the things I look at. For me, quality life is being able to be in a place where I don't have to be worried about locking my car and, and you know, and, and who's going to come. Because those things happen everywhere. Everywhere. In the world. Panama, is a, as I said, is a very safe country. We have the little things that everybody has in all the countries because of external situations of, about trafficking, but mainly we are a culture that is not violent. So the towns are very, 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 like we go, I don't know, I'm sure in the States there's places like that. I've heard lately about towns that, are, that have, you know, very small situa uh, populations. But um, in Pedasi and in Boquete and in Volcan, what I have seen is that people go to sleep when the sun goes down. You can see that the town is just going down and down and down. Some people find it boring. I find that quality life. And I'm a city girl. I'm a city person. I love the things of the city. But I think more and more people are looking for that. Having the option of the airport, having the option of good medical um, assistance, all these things. So those are the three places I would pick. Pedasi is my first option. Volcan and Boquete, second and third. Boquete is practical. And they all have good climates, huh? because Boquete and Volcan are in the highlands. Um, Boquete, 
Boquete is seven carete uh, in, in have it here in um in feet, three thousand two hundred feet above sea level. Yeah. And I think it's, it's um sea level on the Pacific coast. Beautiful beaches, beautiful people. They have very nice good new resorts. Land is still affordable there. It's six hours drive straight from Panama City. Boquete, you do seven hours. They're competing, huh? It's just the part that Boquete has more more of the like, you know, they have a few other things that I would like to have if I'm not going to live in the city permit. But I see has good restaurants, local ones. They have amazing um, sightseeing. The beach is right there. You have good access to the rest of the area, which is Venao, um, Tonosí, Cambutal. All that area down there is um, known mainly for surfing. Um, you can do very good bird watching there. Do the turtles. There's a, a, an island called Iguana. It's like one which is beautiful to go there and do scuba diving and, and snorkeling. We have quite a few places that are very good options for um, going to live. It doesn't matter what age, huh? And you can and in all those areas as the whole country there's so much to do. We are just starting to do everything here. So almost any business can be uh, a good option to start your new life in Panama. Exactly, like you were saying, uh, there's certain areas that people want to go. There's people that I know that live in El Valle, which is very nice, uh, Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And for people okay, who want to be closer to Panama, it's uh, Gorgona or uh, 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 Punta Chame, um, those areas. So uh, um, I, I recently heard that uh, Panama is going to be having a uh, uh, a new province, El Chorea. Chorea? They just, they just passed a law this week. Um, Panama Oeste was the part that had just, it just became another province. Panama Oeste is the area exactly after the, the bridge, the, Pan the bridge of the Americas, when you drive towards the countryside. And it has Arrehan, Chorrera, Capira. I think the beaches are included there too, because it's the part in between. Panama province and Cocle. When you reach Rio Alto, you're already in Cocle, where the international airport is going to be, where the Cameroon and all those beaches are. Okay, so that that part of the country is going to become it. Well, if they if we're just now in the process to because the law was passed this last week, it's going to be the tenth country and country the tenth province, Panama Oeste. The Panama province was divided until this week by Panama Oeste, Panama Este, which is East, Oeste means West, and then the, the, the metropolitan area. So we are making that part now another problem. I cannot talk much about that because it just happened this week. Okay. I am assuming that it's, that it's a matter of legislation, uh, managing the, the, the geographically uh, I guess all countries go through that at some point. We were in the province, all the provinces we were, we, we are now, and at some point that happened. And I'm going to start studying about it, see how, why, what's behind the purpose of doing that. I'm sure there's something that really, really backs it up in, in a good way. I think it's good because I've seen that in the developed countries, you know, every state has their law. For some things it's good, for some things it's not. So that's what I see that Panama is getting to. Hopefully, it would be something good. But it's anything from the from the bridge towards the Cocle, where the limit is one. There's one river that you can see the delimitation that it says "Welcome to Cocle" when you drive down the beaches. That area, is all Coronado is going to be now part of Panama Oeste. They're no longer like, for example, Arayhan and Chorrera people who are considered. The city or the main, they're, they're no longer going to be there. Going, I, I think La Chorrera is going to be the main, they right. have to have a capital. I haven't read about what is going to be the capital of the province. I guess after the holidays, we'll, yeah, we'll, I, get, we'll, yeah, we'll continue I, working on that. 
I just heard that when they pick a name of Chorera, uh, a lot of people thought it should be Arihan of the province. <laughs> they want Arihan, yeah, he's the first, he's the first um, community after you leave the, the main city. But you mm -hmm. have Arihan, you have Chorrera, you have Capira, you have Chame, you have Coronado, Orgona, um, you have um, Santa Clara. Then Riato, Anton, but Riato and Anton are part of Cocle already, so he's the one from Santa Clara. Okay. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I think, so. I, I think there's got to be a reason. I didn't hear the exact reason why they're doing it, but I'm sure it must have been a, a logical reason. The, the other uh, big celebration in Panama is not until February, but Carnival. Now, the big area is uh, Las Tablas, correct? Yes. And it's quite interesting they have the, the split between one part and the other part. And they have big parades, they have their own queen. Our towns, proportionally to the country, are very small. Most of them have, all of them have, the same way all the Spanish colonies are, were built, a main plaza in the center of the town. And there's a booth right in the middle, and that's where everything took place at some point. The church is in one of the four corners of it. And there's a, a, a up street and a down street. That's the, 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 the exact translation of it, calle arriba y calle abajo. Mm -hmm. And the dispute traditionally has been between the queen of one part of the town and the other one, which was originally two streets. That one, that one, one that was up and one that was down, north and south, I assume. Mm -hmm. So the dispute throughout the years has been which queen is more beautiful, which queen is more delightful, which one dances better, which one um, is, is able to wear the, the, the best costumes, which one has the, the better um, followers, the, better, the, the best bands, the best parties the best fireworks when they finish the carnival. It, it, I say and I get goosebumps. Um, I like La Sala is the most famous carnival venue we have in the country. But that doesn't mean that Chiriqui doesn't have theirs in Dolega. I've been to all of them. And yes, what makes La Sala's one more attractive? That intensity and that, um, what's the word, the, that passion is something that they, this, the people from that town carry all year through. The Pollera people, now I am doing a project with the lady from Santo Domingo de las Tablas and with the Pollera and learning more about how it is. If you talk to these people, this is something that is centuries old starting from the point of making the pollera, the way the kids are taught, the way the mothers help them get their dress, their hair done, the way the neighbor, and San Domingo is maybe one or two streets big, this area. But they, within Santo Domingo, they also have their disputes in Las Carnavales. And at the end, as I go back to the same point, we're not violent people, and so at the end, it's, it's just a matter of throughout the tunada, which is the, the singing, of the groups of each um, queen or princess or calle arriba, calle abajo, they shout and they attack the other group. But always within an environment of carnaval, of a time that we have to have to just do and be ourselves and to promote our play, to show our costumes. The night, the night costume that these queens wear are amazing, and they're oh, yeah. thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. worth. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I like I like the carnival in the in the in the countryside in Panama because of the tradition and the history behind it. We did have that in the city until the. I participated in uh, in the early nineties. We still have that here in the city. It was very 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 stunning and beautiful the way the whole city. Um, celebrated the costumes and the traditions on the float 
Stroga di España. It was very, very desirable to have that. It, it stopped, and I think they're trying to revive it. But when you stop doing things like that for too long, it, it takes time to recover it. Whereas in the country, it's not like that. It, it, it has always been happening, and and they have made sure, like our indigenous groups, to to make to have the new generations get involved, which I think is very important to back up the the traditions of any country. Now, didn't last now, didn't year they last move, year uh, they move uh, Carnaval to Santa Costera? Yes, that yes, last year they did it um, to Santa Costera. But as I said, they are now trying to revive to revive the tradition in the city, and they are trying because, as I said, I participated in the ones la in the in the last few years that it took place in the city, and it was a beautiful and as traditional as, as it was in the town, with the participation of the people, with the way it was done. They're trying, they, they're now in, um, I used to say that they are, for example, working on the, the queen, because it's, that's a, a very important figure within the carnival, the queen, and how she represents the, popul the, the, the people as, as, as part of the carnival. So I have been to all the, um, where they do the contest and they, they declare the queen. So I see that it's happening. They, for, for a period of time, it, was, it took place in San Sismica. Uh, that was the late 90s, beginning of the 2000s. It was taking place in the San Sismica and it was very good in the part of the, the band. They will bring international bands. But that's not, that's not mainly the way we are at the carnival. Barranquilla is like that. Santa Marta is like that. Many places in Colombia are like that. For us, it's more, yes, we like the dancing, we like the, the I call it the hydration, but for us, it's more the, the dress, the, the costume, the, the pollera, the traditional, just being able to, that, for that event, show our, our traditions throughout our, the way we, we arrange ourselves throughout the four days. Whereas what I see in the city right now, which, which doesn't mean it's not going to get there, is it's more about the partying and the and the bands and which is okay. We just gotta re 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 uh, gain that that we had in the past because we did. Last night I was in an event at the Santa Costera that the mayor was doing, and 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 that's what they're trying to do also with the celebration of the beginning of the the holidays. This took place, oh, it, had, it was always there, and at some point it was stopped. So what happens now that the generation that can participate completely with it doesn't know about it. So what the, the state is doing now is, is re-educating the people. Because it did happen in the past. I, I experienced it. But it... it it, those things happen. It dep sometimes it depends on the government. Sometimes it depends on the on the 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 demand. So it, we're going to a tr transition. Carnival is a great time in Panama, so that I would suggest people to come and, and experience. And you can experience it in many ways, all throughout the country, from the city towards Chiriquí, Indolega, and Concepcion, Tenonomé. Now Aguadulce has one too. Pedasí has a beautiful carnival too. Um, even in the even in the islands in San Blas, they they do have their own celebrations there, in their own way. Now, one other, now, one uh, other event, uh, well, uh, ma event, many events well, all over events Panama all over is the Reynados. Reynados. The Reina, see the, the queen, reina. the queen, the queen. <laughs> it, it, what I was reading is uh, there's, uh, there's uh, many uh, different, uh, different uh, when it's companies, uh, companies or, or nursing homes, companies uh, or nursing uh, homes uh, 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 reinas are very, reinas popular, are very in popular in Panama. Yes, I remember even my aunt was the the queen of her high school. Even when in high schools in the past, when the high school I went to, the last reinado that they did was 81. And they never did it again. I don't know. For some reason, you just start. They just start stopping them everywhere, except the, the cities. Sorry, except the towns where the carnival is, is very, 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 very um, part of it. 
But in the past, even the even the transnationals, like the shipping companies, I think they still do it, but it's not as big as it was before. That every company will have a year. How how will you say right now? Though? A, a queen. Queen. Uh, yes. Queen. Yeah. A queen. No, but when you say right now, you're saying in the word that a, a queen is going to be voted for and and assigned, elected. Okay, election. Right. The queen election. That's what Reynado means. The queen election. But that Reynado, the queen election, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a matter of a lot of things. It starts from every department choosing somebody within the department. Every, every And then the, the company, within the company, elects one queen. And then there's a, there's a time throughout a certain month in the year where they, for example, in the shipping companies that I participated more, they had all these competitions. And you have all the people backing up this queen from every company, and then th there would be an annual transnational uh, shipping company queen elect. It was it, it was to to that point. We still do it. I can see now that in kindergarten and and in preschool they're starting to do it again to elect the queen. Nothing yeah. like in the past. Who's prettier now? Which I like. It's it's about who. Who is who um, manages it herself best in many in many different areas? Even in preschool, they're doing that. It's not about right. who. Right. It's it's a. I think they're doing it more more conscious about the way even the international concepts are. It's not only about beauty, but what is what can you offer to to the people who want you to be a queen? All right. Only yeah. in preschool, let's see it again now. Yes. Yeah. Very, it's very interesting. Everything yeah, I, is about having parties. Yeah, Panama, uh, yeah, Panama likes, uh, likes to have parties, but I uh, have a video on my on my website. It was done by, uh, I don't know if she's Pan, I think she is Panamanian, Anna Andari. Anna Andari. Anna Andara. Andara, yeah. And she did the uh, video about uh, uh, Reynas. And it's pretty interesting because it, it's not about beauty. It can be just the type of person that you are. I think you said supermarkets, uh, companies have their own internal. Um, a friend of mine, her friend was a, a Reina of uh, the company a few years ago. So, yeah, it's 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 a quite a, an interesting thing. And if you watch her video, it's, it's why do Panamanians have uh, or the obsessed with Reynas, I guess it's part of the culture going back, uh, and you probably know that for sure. The other, the other question I, I want to ask you about um, is my favorite food in Panama, uh, and I know in different parts of Panama they make it a little different way, but ceviche, I, I love ceviche. If you're going to ask me where, where that comes from, I really don't know. <laughs> I, I know it's all in Central America. America. Yeah, because um, I guess as many as many many dishes in many countries, things things like ceviche that are so traditional come from the fact that at some point there was no electricity, and lemon is a very good preserver and a very good um, natural way of cooking protein because that's the main part of the ceviche what is the ceviche the basic one um, you, you guys call it lime lime juice pure lime juice. and lemon lime and lemon yeah, yeah lime our, our lemon is the lime it's very acid and strong the flesh of a fish that the, the, a, a hard flesh it has to be a flesh like corvina flesh or sargento I don't know how you say sargento in English. Um, sea bass, for example, it has to be a, a, a fish flesh that is strong enough, sturdy right. enough, that the lemon will not dissolve it completely because then it will become like a soup, a thick soup in, in lemon. So you have the flesh of the fish, the lemon, onion, salt, and pepper, hot pepper. We use, we use um, scotch bonnet, habanero, I don't know, it has different names. We call it ají chombo here. Mm -hmm. Now we have many, many, many different ways of making ceviche. You can also make it with kingfish. My my grandmother used to make ceviche with kingfish, which is it's, it's very attractive. It's not very popular commercially. You can make um, ceviche with um. Well, my favorite one is um. 
clam. It's, uh, it's a clam that Shrimp. no. It's a it's a it's a clam. It's a dark clam, black clam that grows in the swamp. Oh, scallop. Oh, scallop. No, ceviche de concha negra. That's my favorite one. Okay. But okay. there's also um, the shrimp one. You have to cook. In the case of the shrimp, the octopus, the lobster, kingfish, the king crab, you have to cook them first. Those are your cooked. Whereas in the case of the real ceviche with, with fish, the lemon cooks the fish. In a matter of five hours, you are ready to eat it. You just soak the raw flesh of the fish in the lemon and that's it. With the other three ingredients, which is salt, pep hot pepper, and, and onion. The other, the other seafood that you can make ceviche with, you have to cook them, most of them. All of them, actually. But yes, yeah, ceviche I, is a big yeah, thing I, in here in Panama. I made ceviche, I made once, ceviche uh, once last year. Last not, year. not the right not, fish, not but the it was right good. Fish, I liked it. Was it. Good. I liked that. But did you see why you say it's not, it wasn't the right fish? Maybe it got too well, soft? No, uh, I, I, no, it didn't, it didn't no, mush it, up. It was okay, but it wasn't, uh, um, the, the proper fish. I, I used a, 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 a fish from up here in Canada, but it was, it tasted good. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, because maybe the taste, yeah, it's different. I, I, I know, I know that the, the seafood from, um, cold waters is different. Yeah. From cold water is different to the, to the warm, the ones in the warm water. Yes, everything here is warm, including the rain. So no worries about the that's rain. Right. The rain that's season. right. You don't that's need. That's something I tell people. You don't need, you don't need hot water, water tanks on your roof. Warm. <laughs> no, when it rains here, it's delightful. At least for that's, me, if it's nice. thick, heavy draw, drop, and they're warm. For the ones who don't like cold. Exactly. Well, uh, Virginia, we've been going a little bit uh, a, a good time. This has been fantastic. I really learned a lot of why people would want to look uh, to relocate in Panama or to vacation, and that's what I've been trying to do. Um, Karen, I know she's doing that. So, so Karen, what would you just your last uh, uh, comments to Virginia be before we cut this off? Oh well, well. Say that you are a wonderful and very Panama. I look forward to uh, I look forward personally, personally and introducing the guests that we have on our just a wealth of information. And I can't thank you enough thank for, you for everything for that you're doing and for being a viable resource. You're welcome, Karen. It was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Also, and yeah. and here I am. I I really enjoy talking about Panama and whatever I don't know, which is human. I can easily find out how it is or what is it about, and and share and and also offer my advice in any way. I really really like welcoming people who come here and and enjoy what we have because we still are a country that can offer a lot, and there's still plenty there's still plenty of space for newcomers yeah. to. To come and do that, even if it's for half a year, that's, that's right. another great. That's, right. uh, that's another great choice, which is done by a lot of people. Right. Well, a lot right. of a lot well, of people that I'm talking to are very excited. Are very excited. So I'm glad. Collectively, so we are looking forward to and I look forward to I look forward to people the Panama that you the Panama that you. I didn't hear the last. Um, yeah, it's the connection. Yeah, it's the connection. Yeah, I don't know. I'm getting some know. feedback. Getting feedback. So, anyways, thank you, Virginia. Anyways, I really appreciate you being on. Uh, your video is going to be on, on my on website. My and website. website. And once you get your and website you get going, your website you can embed uh, you this can interview on your website uh, also. Because I know you're going to be promoting Panamanian crafts and. And things uh, like that, but yes, like that. Uh, but I'm I'd be uh, very excited I'm to I'm meet you in January also, and to get more information, to information suck to information from you, from you. Um, because okay. I, I enjoy because Panama's, I Panama's history, history, and the more that I know about Panama, the more I can tell people what a wonderful place it is. Okay, thank you, Michael, for the the opportunity. I really enjoyed it. I hope it helped um, you and Karen. Um, to love more Panama and, and have other ones to do so too. Yes, we will. Yes, okay. We will. And okay. thank you everybody thank who you got everybody a chance to watch this broadcast. broadcast. It's very late. Very late.
I had some major technical problems, but um, uh, got it all working, not what I want. I'm in a different area in my area to do this. But anyway, thank you very much. Tune in next week. I don't know who the guest will be next week, but it'll definitely be an interesting show. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye, Virginia.